going to continue our conversation about uh, the political makeup of Orange County, more specifically uh, Sheriff Mike Corona, as we are joined now by Orange County Register political reporter Peggy Lowe. Glad to have you back in, Peggy. Hi, guys. All right, let's start. Uh, let's go back two stories and okay. talk about Norby calling for the resignation of the sheriff. It, it has been a, a bit of a change from his first uh, the, his first press conference. It sure was. He was very wait and see in the beginning. And as you recall, the first day that the indictment was unsealed, the only supervisor to come out and say that Corona should resign was Supervisor John Morlock. Then later, District Attorney uh, Tony Rakakis also said, hey, the sheriff should be taking a leave of absence. But I have to say we were a little surprised that Chris Norby uh, came out this week and said, you know, he's not a full-time sheriff. We need one. The department has a lot of challenges, and he should resign. He said that the public has spoken, but yet I've not seen any, any effort as, at a recall election. There has been no effort to, for a recall. However, there have been some people talking about it, but it's such a long shot. You'd have to gather at least 150,000 registered signatures. It would be very expensive. It's very hard to mount those campaigns and really get that together. So. No, I think you're right, Ed. The public really hasn't spoken yet. What about the other three supervisors? They're also taking a wait and see. I mean, Janet Wynn was very diplomatic last week when this came up. I talked to you guys about this last week mm -hmm. after the supervisors meeting, and she said, it's really not cool that this indictment's out there. You know, our sheriff should be doing what he should be doing. But basically, the board is powerless to do anything about the sheriff. They can't take him out because they don't have the authority. Mm -hmm. And when John Morlock ran that um, proposal last week, it got voted down. So they really can't do anything. And there's been talk about uh, we should create some new law within the county of Orange so that we can take people out, such as, the, as Mike Corona, when a situation like this comes up. Uh, that makes some people very skeptical to create some a, a new law just for a specific situation. Exactly. That's what the district attorney said. You know, he said, let's not react to this one situation by changing the law. That's a really big step. Mm -hmm. And the other supervisors who wouldn't go for it last week said, it's it's way too much of a step. It's giving way too much control to the board. Right. In, in the, the hearing today, I mean, it's it's been told that the sheriff and Debbie need to, to be away from some of their closest friends, including their tax accountant. Uh, how's that going to play out? It was really interesting today, and that was the biggest fight during the about 40-minute court appearance that they were at today. The government prosecutors have a list of about 28 people who they say the coronas cannot contact. These are some close friends. These are their tax accountant, as you said. Don Heidel's at the top of the list. Debbie Corona's best friend is on that list. And what prosecutors are saying is, these guys are potential witnesses, and I don't want the coronas talking to them because, they said, Sheriff Corona stands accused of witness tampering because because he allegedly tried to get Don Heidel to lie. Mm -hmm. So that's why prosecutors want the Coronas to stay away from these people. And in other cases, it's usually not quite that stiff, is it? No. I mean, a list of 28? Is I know, that 28. Unusual? And you know, I have to say, the judge kind of had your reaction, and he said, I see the merit in a list like this. We do not want them tampering with witnesses. However, the government can't just throw everybody on this list. Right. It has to be it has to be just a few people. So the attorneys on both sides are getting together and they're going to work on that list and that will come out later. Okay. What else in court today of relevance? They set the June date. Mm -hmm. There's another hearing in December. Um, this is going to be a very long, expensive trial. Uh, Corona has a new attorney by the name of Brian Sun, who's a very big-time criminal defense attorney who's handled some really large cases. Mm -hmm. And whenever I, t I called around today to ask lawyers their opinion of him, and all they said was, he's very expensive. He's very expensive. He's very well, expensive. <laughs> maybe expensive translates to he's very good. I exactly. don't know. Um, in, in the last quick question, uh, there have been murmurings, at least in this studio from guests that we've had on, that... Uh, the sheriff will not end up going to court, that he will end up settling. What kind of murmurings have you heard? Of course, there's absolutely no way to predict that. However, Corona has said, I'm here, I'm working, he's taking the 60-day leave of absence, but he said, I am going to be completely vindicated, I'm going to stay in my job. Then right after he said that, of course, he announced the 60-day leave of absence. Right. So, you know, it's politics is a game of trying to guess what the next guy's going to do, and it's a horse race and that kind of thing. But so far, he's staying in place, mm -hmm. and there's nothing they can do about it. All right. Peg, thanks for coming. Glad to have you on. Thanks, Peg. See ya.